Hi, I'm Ben Voss and I write the documentation. Here's another quick tip video for you. Noise is an inevitable and unwanted result of rendering 3D images. Unless your scene is extremely simple or uses non-photorealistic method of rendering, it's likely you will have some. Lightwave's buffer view enables you to track down exactly where this noise is coming from before you launch your scene render, your F10. I'm including the example scene as a link on this YouTube video and uh, you can click to get it for yourself and have a look. Okay, to exaggerate the effects of this workflow, I've set my base values very low. Our scene has a depth of field with the f-stop set to an unrealistic 0.8, as we can see here, depth of field, 0.8. We have also got motion blur, uh, standard settings. We also have only one sample for anti-aliasing and in our render settings which we do with control P we have our render samples, reflection samples at one, refraction samples at one and subsurface scattering samples at one. All our lights in this scene uh, use one sample uh, and our GI, our brute force GI, is only using one ray. Okay, all these combine to give a render that looks like this. As you can see, it's pretty quick, only four and a half seconds, but it's also pretty noisy. So let's see how we can fix this. Okay. The first place to look, and we're going to use these buffers here. The first place to look is the alpha. This gives us this rendering. As you can see, our plane is a little noisy. Our moving logo is definitely noisy. And we've got this strange black area here on our transparent logo, which is odd. Okay, so it's probable that some of this noise is caused by the motion blur and the depth of field. Okay, but if we don't have any of that, then all you need is more camera samples for anti-aliasing. That will cure the alpha noise problem. If we take our motion blur and depth of field out of the equation, you can see that alpha noise is not our problem. Why have we got this though? This is a transparent logo. Why have we got black bits cutting through the floor plane? Okay, the reason for that is because we've got refraction rays bouncing around inside our transparent logo. And because we've got no environment in our scene, as we can see by going back to the final render, which has got black as a background, it means that they're actually reflecting off this black background. And that's why we have the black here. It's not holes in the floor. Okay. The next one we'll go down to is diffuse indirect noise. Okay, so if I go US, diffuse indirect. That's what we want. And we can see here this noise. This is probably the most common challenge and we don't actually have that much because we don't have many purely diffuse objects in the scene. Nonetheless, you can see it a bit in the curls of the red logo down here at the bottom right um, and in the cubes behind it. Okay, this noise is normally caused by too few global illumination samples. Increasing the number of brute force rays in the global illumination settings is the best thing to do. If your scene doesn't use radiosity, such noise can be cured with additional camera samples. We don't tend to adjust our camera samples overall because what that does is increase the samples for everything. They're multipliers. So if you increase that, you're going to make your render longer than it needs to be. The next thing we'll look at is specular direct. This noise is caused by a lack of light samples. In the blue ball, we can see obvious lacks in the lights reflected. 
these three here, uh, particularly in the area light, which is very noisy. Usually increasing the light samples a little is enough to cure these problems, but it does depend on the size of the light. Larger lights will require more samples. It can be confusing to spot the difference between specular direct and specular indirect noise. Direct is the reflection of the lights themselves in your surface, while indirect is a reflection of other objects, and we'll come on to that later. Next, we'll cover diffuse direct noise. Okay, so diffuse direct. Diffuse direct noise is usually seen in the shadows of your objects. It can be cured with additional light samples, but also we've got to look down at shadow noise later on. That might be enough for you. Let's carry on to shadow noise. Okay, shadow noise is always and always a result of too few light samples. There's little point adding light samples to all your lights. In this image, we can see that the light behind the yellow logo on the left needs additional samples, but the other lights in the scene are probably okay to keep render times as low as possible. Let's carry on to the next one. Let's go back to specular, but this time with the indirect noise. Now, Specular indirect noise is caused by the reflection of objects in other objects and not the reflection of lights, which is specular direct. You can check by uh, setting the surface in which something is reflected to have a roughness of zero. If the noise disappears, you'll know that there's a problem with specular indirect. Uh, we can check here. So let's have a look at the floor and I'll just change the clamp here to make it a, a low of zero. And you can see here that we've got very little noise in this reflection. It's purely coming from the logo itself. So we can say that it's not our uh, specular indirect causing the problem. So 0.15 just to go back to what we were. And let's get rid of this. Okay, so... To clear specular indirect noise, you need to up your reflection samples in render properties here. Okay, so these ones. Right, the next one in a similar vein is refraction noise. And we'll go here. This is caused when transparent objects in your scene don't have enough refraction samples. It can be seen in the final render by noise and the lack of definition, and more clearly looking directly at the refraction AOV, which is what we're doing here. It can be cured by increasing the refraction samples in render properties uh, up here. So there is one more object in our scene causing problems, but if yours is good to go now, you can probably render your scene. However, we've got this object here which is using subsurface scattering. So let's look at this here. Okay, we'll go to SSS Direct. And you can see our logo is noisy, 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 noisy. The only way to cure this uh, problem is to up your subsurface scattering samples. So we can try making it 16. What does that give? And now, with all the other things that are there, let's turn off motion blur, depth of field is turned off. We can see that we've got a pretty good result here. Let's show it as it should be. If I revert the scene. Yes. And I hit F9. By the way, in case you didn't know, the blue squares here are the number of creds you have in your processor. The yellow squares are when the number of creds is running down, so you divide the work between the cores that are remaining. So, here we go, nine seconds for my final render. Now if I load, 
Yeah, load my final scene. And render. And when the green is where you're doing the preparatory render. So green is initial samples. Blue is now further samples and anti-aliasing. I'll just speed up the rendering process in the video here so that you don't have to wait the whole time. Okay, so we can see here that the render time for this image took 11 and a half minutes on my computer roughly. And if we go back to the noisy one, that took nine seconds. So a big comparison. There is one other comparison I'd like you to see. So I'm gonna load back the noisy version of the scene. We introduced a denoiser in our rendering, uh, which is here. Now, the CPU denoiser is quite complex and needs lots of different um, renders to create the denoised version. In essence, I don't think it's very useful. However, the GPU denoiser is much more useful. There are no options and it just works. However, it requires an NVIDIA graphics card, uh, which means that it won't work on Macs or any machines equipped with a, a Radeon card. You can see it in, in action when I hit F9 now. I'm just using the basic noisy scene again. And our version here, 8.6 seconds. If I go back up one, that's our denoised version. That's 11 and a half minutes. And that's our original noisy version. So original noisy version, GPU denoised version, or version rendered with more samples. So you can see the difference here and here. It depends on what your needs are and if you can get away with using this. If you can, that a nine second render is always going to be better than a render that takes uh, 800, 684 seconds. Okay, that's it. All right, speak to you soon.